friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about making and using your own nut flour. That means once you make your nut milk, which I have many videos on, and I'll link to a couple of them down below in the description box. So if you're new to learning how to make nut milk, you can check these out. I have one on coconut milk, uh, almond milk, pecan cashew milk, Brazil nut milk. I have quite a few out there. I think I might even have it in a playlist. So anyway, this is going to be about what you do with the pulp left over after you make your nut milk and how you can use it in various things. Now to be up front, I've only experimented with it here and there along the way and I'm experimenting all the time. So some of these things I'll be talking about, I'll also be doing more updates on down the road as I do more with it. So first let's talk about how to make that nut flour. So once you strain out your nut milk, you wanna use a clean cotton cloth or cheese cloth. Some people will even take old pillowcases and wash them up really well anything that's a natural fiber that you can strain your milk through and then just squeeze out as much of the milk as you can so for two reasons you want to get as much of the milk for using in other things out of that and as much moisture out of the pulp as you can so that will make it much easier for drying and turning into a flour so the next thing that I do is once I get all the milk squeezed out the best I can, I then take that ball of pulp, I put it onto a stoneware baking pan, and then I will spread it out. Sometimes I'll use a spatula. It really just depends on the nut pulp that I'm using. Almond pulp is the easiest one to work with and to turn into a flour. And that one I can simply take and just break up like this with my fingers on the pan. But if it's one of those that has cashews or Brazil nuts in it, then it, it tends to want to clump. And so then I'll spread it out with a spatula on the pan and then try to really break it up as much as I can. I then take it and I set it either on top of, high up on my wood stove, as seen in this picture right here, but if the fire is really hot and I'm, or I'm afraid I can't take the time to sit and watch it, I will then cover it with a cloth and set it on my dehydrator rack that Patrick built for me. Uh, right next to the wood stove and then it will take two to three days to dry that way. If I put it on top of the wood stove, it can dry within the day easily enough, but you have to keep a close eye on it if you're going to do it that way. Now, if you don't have a wood stove or a rack that you can use that with, then you can simply use an electric dehydrator, whatever you have to dehydrate that pulp. Now with the fattier ones, like the Brazil, the ones that have Brazil nuts and cashews in it, what you're gonna find, no matter how well you broke it up, is you might end up with hard clumps once it's fully dried. And in that case, what I do is I take, Patrick made me some little short rolling pins, specifically so I can use them right in my cookie sheets, my, my baking pans, and so then I'll roll those hard pieces out as best I can to break them up more and that's really going to help. Then I take my coffee grinder here. I just got done uh, grinding up some uh, pulp into flour so that's why it looks like this. I have this one set aside specifically for doing things like that, for grinding anything but coffee. Then I have another one just for coffee and so anyway I'll put that in there and run it you know, you only want to fill it up about halfway and then run it and then I'll pour it into my jar and then keep doing that until I work through all of it and getting it as fine as I can. Now you can also try this in whatever uh, brand blender you have and see if that works better for you. Here's my jar of uh, nut flour that I have so far. I've actually been working through it quite quickly so you know which is good and that's one of the reasons why I've been finding more uses for the nut flour because I've really been enjoying making the nut milk more lately and using it in my coffee in the morning and in various other things. The two things I've done successfully so far using only my homemade nut flour are making some homemade almond crackers. There is a recipe out there a video that I have that I actually got the recipe for these particular crackers from Wanda over at Deep South Homestead and so I'll put that video recipe down below but in that one I hadn't started using my own homemade nut flour I actually went and bought some first 
then later and i i think i might have done a you know talked about it in a this and that video i did try making another batch using only my own homemade almond flour and it turned out just as good as the store bought and then the other thing i've done successfully is to make pancakes solely using the homemade nut flour in that particular one it was a blend of all the different nuts that i have because i'm always mixing up and making different types of nut milk and the only one i didn't have in there is the coconut flour so um, which i'll i do that as well now i think there was a video i did where i talked about a price comparison as to buying your nut milk and buying your nut flours already pre-made as opposed to making your own you really come out money ahead if you stock up on your various nuts the ones that you like best and then make your own milk from that and then make your own flour from that and also the nut milks that you buy from the store are usually have added ingredients i think they're at least here in the u.s finally starting to get away from the carrageenan but they can sometimes have other added ingredients and they can also be very expensive and when you make your own it's not cheap because we're talking nuts here nuts are not cheap how unless of course you're growing your own making your own is far less and i though i don't remember what the cost different one difference was it was a consistent considerable enough difference because out of one cup of nuts you can get nearly a cup of flour plus uh, up to three or four cups of milk out of that of nut milk so you can get almost a whole quart of nut milk just depends on how much water you add to it when you're making your nut milk and how much you get squeezed out of the pulp as well but anyway the it did come out to be uh, much farther ahead and so I like that for both the money savings of doing it myself as well as knowing exactly what's going into the nut milk and of course the nut flour as well today I'll be making that batch of pancakes so I can share the recipe with you though I did already put a printed recipe to that on patreon so some of you might have seen that if you've been watching the community post here on YouTube and just so you know if you're new our patreon is completely free and open to everyone no donation necessary to go check out all of our our posts so don't forget to go check out our patreon page if you're interested in some of the extra little things that I like to put out I try to put out two maybe three posts on there a week and again anyone's welcome to come check it out we do not lock down any of our posts so I'll be doing the pancakes but let's let me first talk about some of the other things that I've used this in I have used the nut flour in as a partial flour replacement in biscuits and they, those turned out really good and I, I loved the flavor that it add now in that case I added I replaced one quarter of the amount of wheat flour with the nut flour and it it just gave it a nice flavor without affecting the overall texture and quality of the biscuit i still had a nice light fluffy biscuit just added kind of a richness to it and really enjoyed that so i'll be doing that more now one thing i did try was making the biscuits completely from nut flour and i think that's going to take a lot more work the biscuits as i feared did not hold together well and they turn out real dark in color i liked the flavor but they fell apart pretty easily well i wouldn't call it a complete failure you know for one obviously i learned something from it but it was still good and it still tasted quite good putting some uh, gravy on it and trying it that way but it just um it 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 was just you know obviously it was kind of heavier as one would expect and again just didn't hold together now here's one of the things I, if i try it again i will do differently and that is leaving the fat out completely i knew that i wouldn't need to put much fat in there because the flour still has a lot of the nut fat in it but i think that's part of what made it a little bit too heavy was putting any in at all so next time i try it i'm gonna try leaving it out all together and see how well i can get the biscuit to pull together and see if that helps also make it light but again as a partial flour replacement in that so good some other things i've done with it that i've really liked is used it as a breading for frying things like fish like i did last night we had some steelhead in the freezer we're trying to work through so i cut that up i did do a blend in that one i did a, a blend of regular wheat flour and also is a half and half blend of the nut flour in that but you can also 
if you're needing to be gluten free. I think the last time I did it, I tried it with a half and half blend of some cornmeal and the nut flour. And boy, did that one turn out good. I liked that one better than the one I did last night. Both were really good, but the, the first one I did was much better with the cornmeal. So a good way to get a completely gluten-free breading that works really good on fish or maybe some other things you would like to fry up and also adds a really nice flavor. Patrick said he really liked the fish last night. So, and I didn't even tell him I used the nut flour in there. Another thing I did fairly recently was added it to my iced pumpkin cookies. We had another family get together and I made some more of those pumpkin cookies. I did replace some of the flour. I think I did about the same ratio I did with the biscuits that I was successful with. And that was replacing about a quarter of the flour that went into the cookies with a with the nut flour. Now those cookies I think are one that I could go at least up to 50-50 on that and possibly even do a full flour replacement using the nut flour. But if you're gluten free, I would say at least try going using whatever your favorite uh, gluten free flour is and then do a partial replacement with the nut flour like maybe going one quarter to one half. I think 50% I think should turn out good. You just kind of have to watch your fat that you're going to add in there. You may The more nut flour you use, the less fat you should be adding to the recipe because of the fat content already in the flour itself. Which in mind also means if you're going to be making a lot, you need to either be working through it or you need to freeze it. Uh, don't, don't leave it like this because it can go rancid because of the fat content that is in that flour. I did try using just a little bit in one of my last batches of homemade yeast bread and that also had a really nice flavor. I don't think I went as high as replacing it with a quarter amount because I you know I like to just kind of increase it little bits at a time so I might have only done maybe as much as an eighth amount of the wheat flour with the nut flour so from there I just kind of continue to increase it and keep experimenting with it because I don't want to have a whole complete failure and the, the more I do that the more I can get an idea how much I can do and still get a good quality bread I'm gonna keep experimenting on my own because that's the way I am I like figuring stuff out on my own rather than follow other people's recipes. Uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of the way I am. And then another really good one to use this in, and I've done this quite a bit, a lot of times instead of even turning the, uh, the pulp into a flour by drying it, I'll use it immediately the next day, like I did in a, in a bread I made a while back, the Brazil nut apple spice bread. And I'll put that recipe down below, and that turned out really good. So I didn't even bother drying out that flour. I just used the pulp directly in there, and I'm thinking with a sweet bread, that might be something one could really up the amount of nut flour and eventually even just do away with the wheat flour altogether if you're looking for a grain-free or gluten-free option for your bread. But again, that's something I'm going to be experimenting with. I'll probably be trying it in smaller amounts at a time first. I believe the nut flour is something you can use in a pretty high quantity in your muffins like you would with your sweet bread and your cookies and have a really good result with that. And then one experiment I did just do was trying to use it as a thickener like you would flowers or anything like that. And while it did help to thicken up the milk, it didn't have the same smoothness or quality or even the thickness that you can get using other things like either flour or if you're gluten free, my favorite thing to use is arrowroot powder or tapioca starch. So these are really good options. Right here I have some arrowroot powder and this is excellent for thickening. The tapioca starch is equally as good. They both have that same consistency as cornstarch. It's just I try to avoid cornstarch because most of the stuff you find out there is GMO. And so that's why I go with the organic arrowroot or tapioca starch. And uh, I will link to the ones that I buy and use down below. The arrowroot is the one I've been getting lately because I can get it through subscribe and save on Amazon and get a pretty good price. But I haven't actually done recently any cost comparisons. So you got to look into that and find which one you think you can get the best price either of in your area or on Amazon through our links. But I do recommend that, especially if you're gluten free. So if you're wanting to try the nut flour as a as a thickener, I would say still combine it maybe a half and half ratio of your tapioca or arrowroot powder with your nut flour. 
because the nut flour is still going to add a nice flavor to whatever it is you're trying to thicken up and also those other nutrients that you can get in that that you're not going to get from your other starches now let me talk a little bit about the nuts that i like to store and use mostly so one of the ones i'm just starting to stock up on and i still need to get jarred up so i can get out of the container are the kirkland brand organic whole cashews now these are not labeled as raw but they are unroasted so if you're looking for a raw organic cashew there's a couple places i would recommend i bought some through uh, the subscribe and save on amazon i will link to those ones below those were pretty good these are a better price which is why i'm going with these and also if you have an azure standard a drop point near you look at them I bought some through them we don't have a drop point so I have to really be careful about what I order through them and only do one big order every once in a while at a time because the shipping can be outrageous to, even though we're just a state up from Azure Standard it still be, can be pretty high and yes I've tried setting up a drop point here before and it was a no-go maybe I should try again someday but I think we're just too remote so yeah you can check out Azure Standard but uh, if, if having it fully raw is not that important to you, but having organic is, then I recommend getting these ones at Costco. You can actually buy these ones online. So again, if you don't have a Costco membership, uh, you can still order most of the stuff that's available online. You can order, you just have to pay a 5% fee, but think of it this way. You're also not paying the yearly card fee just to have the membership. And what I found is that the price comparison, even after adding that 5% on, still ends up being a better price for most of the items there than if I was to buy them elsewhere. So I'm really happy with these. I'll be ordering some more. Well, I haven't even opened these to try them yet, but I feel pretty good about them because I've liked all the other nuts I've bought. Uh, the Kirkland sig Signature brand organic nuts that I bought. And it's not, not all of them are organic. I try to go as organic as I can, such as the almonds right here. So I get, I every time I get a bag, I open up the bag, I vacuum seal most of it into a jar and then save the rest to either just snack on or to make some nut milk and nut flour out of. Uh, some other ones I like to stock up on are the hazelnuts. Now these ones I got on Amazon through the subscribe and save I bought in bulk hazelnuts I found are the most expensive so I bought a big bag I cannot remember the size bag I bought but I'll put the link down below you got to kind of weigh it out and figure it figure out how much you're going to eat them and use them obviously there is a better price the higher poundage you get on on your nuts at least on the ones that I've been buying and then another one is the organic Brazil nuts. Now these ones I've been getting, I think it's the Terra Soul brand I've been getting through Subscribe and Save. However, the same brand that sells the hazelnuts and the coconut that I like to buy, because I did just recently do another big coconut purchase, because you can get some pretty good sized bags. The bigger amount that you buy at a time, the much better deal you're gonna get. I found that they have the Brazil nuts for an even better price per pound, and I think I bought I've got a 10 pound bag coming uh, through the subscribe and save, which means I'm saving another 15% by doing that. And so it's the best deal yet on the Brazil nuts. So I've been nervous about doing it because Brazil nuts are the one, the only one I've ever had go rancid in food storage if left too long, even vacuum sealed into the jars. Now this one, I'm, I've just been putting them in here because I've been, as they come in, I just keep working through them. So working through them fast enough that they're not going rancid. But since I'm getting this big, bag what i'm going to be doing is freezing i'll keep some out for using right away and then freezing up the rest so that i don't have to worry about them uh, going rancid oh and then pecans are the other ones now these ones sadly are not organic i do get these from costco though and they're really good pecans a really good price but if you're if the organic for the pecans is really important to you then um i will see what i can find on amazon amazon usually has a pretty good selection of different nuts for a good price and maybe the brand that i got the hazelnuts they might even have some so if i can find those for you i'll go ahead and put them down below because there's a lot of those that are available through subscribe and save you know so if you get it on a monthly basis or or maybe every six months you can save quite a bit of money that way i like doing pecans and cashews together because with those i i take the pulp and make that into a vegan cheese 
all the other blends or solo nuts that I use go into making a flour. So now let's go ahead and move on to this pancake recipe. All right, so we start with the nut flour. And what I need here is one and a half cups. So this is enough. I'm not making a huge batch because this is just gonna be for the two of us. Okay, there we go. There's one and a half cups of the nut flour. Now, when you're talking about heavier things like nut flours and stuff like that it's better to go a little bit higher on your baking powder ratio obviously you don't want to go too high or you're going to get that baking soda flavor in there and that's kind of gross so i found that using a whole tablespoon per cup and a half to be the perfect amount for the pancakes now that's going to be normally a tablespoon is what you're going to use when you're doing twice as much so if you're doing twice that much you might want to add two tablespoons if you're going to add any salt at all keep it very light handed i'm going to put only a little pinch in here just like that not even that whole pinch uh, that's just going to help bring out the flavor of everything that's in there and so you don't want to go too high remember this is pancakes now you can choose to add some kind of sweetener if you'd so choose if you're keto or you're completely sugar free you can consider adding a little teensy weensy pinch of your monk fruit sweetener or stevia if you're not keto the one i like to use is the uh, coconut sugar but i'm only going to put a tiny bit in because of another ingredient i'm going to add here in a minute and i'll explain why typically you don't want to put too much uh sweet stuff in your pancakes because usually you're going to be using maple syrup or something like that on them anyway but i do like what coconut sugar does coconut sugar is high in minerals of all kinds and i just this is why i really like to use it and i and i keep experimenting finding more ways that i can supplement or substitute white sugar for coconut sugar and a lot of things you can't substitute all of it but in some things you can uh, apple butter is one of the things it's really good in okay so next what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use two eggs now that sounds like a lot of eggs for such a small amount but again because of what we're working with here because you don't have the gluten in there helping to hold things together so you always need a higher egg ratio to make it hold together nicely so i have two eggs here from my chickens now what i have here is a milk kefir and so what i recommend for a pancake like this that you do something you have a buttermilk or a milk kefir which is supposedly the proper way to pronounce it and if you don't have that then take your milk take about all, a shy cup of milk add a tablespoon of vinegar to it preferably your own homemade vinegar and let it sit for up to 15 minutes and or well you can actually mix it and add it in right away because you're going to want to let your batter sit for a while anyway because of the cultured milk of what it is this is going to make your pancakes and whatever your biscuits or whatever it's going to make them fluffier so start you might need up to a whole cup what i do is i start with a little bit just to kind of be able to mix the eggs and no i'm not left-handed so this feels really weird just so i can mix the eggs and the flour and the kefir in together and then I'll just keep adding it. So uh, just keep doing it that way. It's going to be easier because your nut flour may end up soaking up a lot more of your liquid than you think it's going to. But you don't want to put too much in right away either or it's, you might end up with too thin. And then, of course, you're going to be uh, just kind of watching it and saying, okay, do I want, you know, because everybody's different in how thin or thick they like their batter we like it a little more on the thicker side but not super thick either so that's pretty close but since i'm gonna let this sit i know that i'm gonna need just a little bit more again it might be up to a cup i'm not measuring it so i don't know i'm just going by by the look and the feel of it as i stir so that right there that feels like a good thickness because i know it's going to thicken up more as it sits and now since i'm not even going to be cooking these pancakes up until tomorrow morning i'm going to be putting this in the fridge and letting it sit overnight and so i'm just going to take a salad plate and set it over there as it fits over this pyrex bowl perfectly okay and then tomorrow i'll cook up those pancakes they cook up really good as long as you're careful when you put first put that on your pan on that first flip 
make sure the bottom of it is really well cooked you should do that anyway with pancakes but use a very wide spatula and don't make your pancakes too big whenever you're working with things like nut flours and other types of gluten-free flours things that don't hold together really great when uh, when you're making your pancakes it's always best to go with the smaller size then you're less likely to have problems with it falling apart but once you flip it that first time then it's going to hold together really good all right i just remembered an ingredient i forgot to add this is my homemade chocolate extract now the reason i said that about the coconut sugar is because half of this is made with glycerin a non-gmo food grade glycerin which has already got its own natural sweetness it's not sugar it's still going to be safe if you're keto or or sugar free but and then the other half is made with homemade wine and so I thought I would add this in just as an extra, just for some extra flavor. So I would say go up to about a tablespoon tops and then mix that in. And this is just one idea. I just thought I would try this one. There's also the coffee extract, there's raspberry, there's pineapple, lemon, orange. There's all kinds of different flavors you can add. And yes, I have a few different extract videos. I have one that is, is alcohol free and then I have the one I have one showing how I do my half and half blend. Okay, putting the plate back over it and now back in the fridge. So there you have it. It's really easy to make your own nut flour, especially if you're already doing your own homemade nut milks. And then taking that flour and here is just some of the ways that you can start using it, incorporating it into your whatever it is that you make and be watching for more updates as I continue to experiment with it and see just how far I can go with some of these different things I like to make in replacing the wheat flour with the nut flour. Oh yes, and one more thing, even if you're not gluten-free, using that nut flour in, in even as partial replacements is going to just add more nutrients and more healthy fat to whatever it is you're making. So it's another reason why it's a good idea to work with. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any friends that are gluten-free you think that could really uh, benefit from this, then please go ahead and share this video with them. And hopefully they can learn something from it as well. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.